Come, follow Jesus. Welcome to our Thursday afternoon time of devotion and prayer. Today is a, a beautiful January day. Temperatures are a little bit warmer. Get some fresh air, chip some ice, do something to enliven your soul and to get something uh, fresh around you because tomorrow the temperatures are going to drop and we are going to be heading into that frigid February type weather. The good news is that as of today, it is only two months until spring. That's a long two months, but the days are getting longer and there is hope in the air. So the good news is God's love never fails, even when it's cold outside. So today we're continuing to look at Jesus's beginning of his calling the disciples to go with him, to be a part of his ministry. Yesterday, we looked at Andrew and Peter as they joined Jesus's group. And today we see Jesus now heading north. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael, beginning with verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, Jesus said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the story continues. As we look at this, Jesus has decided to head to Galilee. But as of reading this, it sounds as if Jesus may still be at that revival, at that campground, at that gathering on the Jordan River, right outside of Jericho. The four brothers that we've heard of so far, Andrew, Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel, all came from the same region very possibly knew each other, very possibly traveled down from the region of Galilee to see what was going on with this giant John the baptizer. Yesterday we saw that Andrew had been introduced to Jesus by John pointing him out. He then spent the day with Jesus, brought his brother Peter. They were convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. Now on the next day, Philip, meets Jesus and goes and gets his brother Nathaniel. And Nathaniel, in hearing the description about the fact that Jesus was from Nazareth, says that uniquely words of, can anything good come from Nazareth? Those words have been reused over and over since that time to describe a cynicism about anybody that comes from a place that is suspect. Of course, the story shows us that Philip has convinced Nathaniel to come and see Jesus, and Jesus is able to convince him of who he is by being able to tell him that he was able to foresee him sitting under a fig tree when Philip showed up to talk about him. And that was enough to convince Nathaniel, between all the other stuff that he'd heard, that this truly was their Lord and Savior. And Jesus then asked him a curious question that we don't really get an answer. Did he only believe because he told him that? 
And then he went on to promise Nathaniel that he will see even greater things than this by following Jesus. Now, one of the reasons I believe that they may have still been in the Jericho area is the mention of the fig tree. Fig trees are not as popular or as populous in the Galilee area, but they grow everywhere around Jericho. Jericho is known for its figs. In fact, if you go into the city of Jericho, they will give you free figs as a sample to try to get you to, to buy figs. And they are. They are delicious and sweet. And so to me, that's just a hint that Nathaniel may have still been there sitting under one of those fig trees in the region. But the part I want to look at for today and for this Sunday is that in the calling of these four brothers, we had Andrew who heard word from a, another preacher to follow Jesus and did and studied and then went and found his brother and brought him. Philip, along the same ways, found Jesus and then went and got his brother Nathaniel. And then we see the skeptic Nathaniel. I know we often talk about doubting Thomas, but Nathaniel never really got a title of being a skeptic, but he was the first one to Jesus talk about Jesus in a way that seems pretty shocking to us as we know Jesus from the, um, what would be called the helicopter view of the whole gospel. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Part of me would say, can anything bad come from Nazareth? If a place like Nazareth can have somebody like Jesus raised and lifted up, because it's not only Jesus that came from Nazareth, it was his mother Mary and his father Joseph. Pretty healthy family. But it does show us that there, in our life as a disciple, that we need to be aware. There are other things that interfere with our bringing the message of Jesus out to this outside world. And right now, personally, I think it's the one, the title that comes with us, Can Anything Good Come From Somebody at a Church? The people have gotten so used to thinking of us as judgmental, as hypocritical, that often our words come with a sense that doesn't allow them to open their hearts for Jesus to come in. And we need to be aware of that in our comings and our goings, our discussion. But it's not just that area. It could be anything. We as humans have a tendency to be quite skeptical when it comes to somebody laying truth upon us. So for us as disciples of Jesus, we need to live as an example of that openness. So as we continue to live as Christians, we need to be aware of the fact that we have come with our own predispositions of people in um, other cities, other countries, other organizations, things that we call prejudice or racism or uh, social um, norms that we put people into categories. And that as Christians, we need to live a life that is opening and accepting and Christ-loving. I, I never really considered that Philip and Nathaniel were brothers. I thought they were always just friends. I think the scripture says that, doesn't it? I don't recall that it did. Well, I'll look, I'll look for Sunday. I will Maybe look. they were brothers. It would make sense, you know, I guess. In a, who, who would he want who would to he go share? Want to? But uh, I guess I just always thought they were just friends. That's well, interesting. I'll do a little re research to make sure I get okay. that right on Sunday. But okay. uh, um, So keep that in mind, that we come with our own ingrown, through a life of living, predispositions on everything from geographic locations, to skin color, to education, to political points of view, and that this world is divided enough as it is, that we as a church don't need to be a part of that wedge that drives between us and the world. We need to be the salve that brings it back together, that can show that what love is truly like, truly accepting, truly looking towards building that kingdom of God. So with that, we'll look at what has continued to be bad news for what I found out was exactly a year. The first patient admitted to a hospital for COVID-19 was one year ago yesterday.
in Washington State. Part of me says it's hard to believe it's only been a year because it feels like it's been a decade. But uh, so in, in that year, it's caused a lot of devastation. <coughs> Ninety-seven million people have had COVID in the world, and two million have died. Over two million have died. In the United States, we've got twenty-four point four million people who have had di been diagnosed with COVID-19. And now it is at 406,536 deaths. Iowa is at 309, 280 cases, 309,280 cases. And we had another 51 deaths in the last 24 hours. So we are now 4,445 deaths. Thinking about that number of 406,536 deaths in the United States, there was, of course, that very moving memorial the other night mm -hmm. um, but if you take that 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 means in the last 17 days there have been 17,345 deaths in the United States that's six times the population of Wilton that means the number of people in Wilton would have been six times that that would have, that would have wiped out six Wiltons you might say or you might say it's almost four times the population of the combined populations of Durant and Wilton. So both communities, you know, would have had it mm -hmm. been wiped out almost four times. Or you can take it a little bit to other places. That's two times the population of Mount Pleasant. And it is the town of Indianola. In one week, that's how many deaths we've had in the United States. So continue to pray. And when the vaccine opens up for you, at your age, whatever that will be, I'm glad that the I'm glad to hear that Iowa is now going with the CDC recommendation. As long as we have vaccine, that people can be vaccinated at 65 and older. And I do hope um, I will certainly be as soon as I can signing up for the vaccine. <laughs> Did you wish you could move her birthday I, up I, about four months? Yeah, I really wish I could because I'm 64, so I'm not going to be eligible for a while yet. But anyway, I, I do continue to pray, and we. You need to be in prayer for all those who are dealing with this up front, you know, the front lines, as Steve always prays for those doctors, nurses, emergency responders, and so forth. Well, as I said yesterday, uh, within our own church, we, the good news is right now everybody seems to be home. I did it kind of a little bit ahead of time, but I was pretty sure of it. But I did get the confirmation that Jim Lincoln is now home from the hospital. He had uh, pneumonia. So... The last that I've heard, everybody in our church is at home. A lot of them are recovering. A lot of them are regaining strength. A lot of them are continuing their radiation and chemotherapy. Um, so we want to continue to keep all of those in our prayers, that uh, Diane Budding can continue to um, get stronger as she continues to look at her pancreatitis, that we can keep in prayers Carolyn Tharp, who's now home, but continues her treatment. Um, Marsha Hetzler, Stefan Turks. Not Stefan. <laughs> Rick Stefan. Rick, Steph, Rick Stephens. Um, or Turk. Or Turk, <laughs> yeah. As uh, they continue uh, their treatments to be with those that are dealing with aches and pains of the uh, mind, heart, body, and soul, that they may continue to uh, uh, improve and to get better. Carol Walton, too. Carol Walton with her stroke, but she's all home. I know all, she's doing better. Yep, Much they're better, all home, but yeah. Still, it's, uh, that can't be easy. Yeah, that's right. It. Uh, uh, but the good news is that they're all close enough and it's a, a local phone call. So if you want to reach out and make a phone call or drop off a good note, um, that would be, I'm sure, well appreciated by everybody. We want to continue uh, to pray for our, our nation. Yesterday was a, a beautiful day of celebrating, um, hopefully, the reuniting of our country. And a peaceful transfer. Sure. Yep. That was very scary. You know, we were afraid of violence. So as we come into our prayer time, um, continue to lift up your own silent prayers, your own celebrations as we uh, go to this time of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the news that they're, all of our flock are home. But we ask that you continue to watch over them and strengthen them and to build them up as they continue rehabilitation and recovery, getting stronger and getting over the aches and the pains. Lord, be with those that are continuing their treatments, their therapies. Lord, we specifically ask that you continue to watch over Diane and Turk and Carolyn and Marsha. 
Carol, as they recover from their bouts and their treatments. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over our nation as we prepare to move forward in this time of COVID-19, that the efficiency of giving out vaccinations and process can be one that brings about hope. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over the doctors and the nurses as they find some relief in the fact that many of them have gotten the vaccine and can now breathe a little easier. To be with our homebound as they continue to wait in our care centers as they now celebrate the fact that they are one step closer to being protected. Lord, I ask that you continue to watch over all of those who live on the front lines, our police and fire departments, EMTs and ambulance drivers, our delivery people and grocery store workers, restaurant workers. Allow them to continue to be safe. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over your church as we continue to look at what it means to be your church in these divided times, in these pandemic times. Lord, we've never done this before, but we know that since your love never fails, that we can get through this and that we can be disciples like Andrew and Philip who reach out and tell others so that they can have that experience of knowing your love and compassion, feeling the freedom of forgiveness. Lord, today, we just ask that you continue to watch over us, to walk with us, to guide our paths, to prepare our hearts, help our minds to discern what it is that we can do to bring about your kingdom. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. One thing to let you know is that today, and what was the positivity rate for today? 13? 13.2% in Muscatine County. So to let you know what the Church Administrative Council, we had set a bar of 12% that we needed to be below that for two weeks. And the way that that works is that on Thursday, today, I check what the positivity rate is. I then, in connection and uh, with the leadership of the church, the lay leader and the ad council leader, we realize and, and admit, I suppose, that today is above 12%, which means it has to be above 12, below 12% today and 12% next Thursday in order to be open, in this case, January 31st. But because we're not below 10, 12% or below today, it will be at least February 7th now before we are back to in-person church. The reason for that delay from the first 12% to church is to give us time to prepare the, the sanctuary, to prepare my, 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 the front of the sanctuary. It's all set up as a TV studio, and it's going to take a while to move stuff, reset stuff, and to do that in a safe way. So we, we give ourselves a week and a half notice. So I can tell you right now, we will still be virtual this Sunday as well as next Sunday. And we can keep praying to wear our masks and to stay safe. And then maybe on February 7th, we will be at a place where we can start our in-person worship. I would remind you that one of the things that our new president has asked is that in his first 100 days of presidency, uh, they often put out a challenge for the first 100 days to see what they can get done to get it started. And um, President Biden, Biden has asked us all to wear masks for the first 100 days. And that alone should be enough to really break the curve, get the vaccines out, as well as having 100 million vaccines is the other goal. So keep that in your prayers. But I would remind you, this Sunday, we will have worship at 10, 15, and 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. And then there will be a Sunday school at 1 o'clock premiering on Facebook and YouTube. For those of you that want to see what about the happiest place on earth, I don't think it says it too, which is the um, shirt. As we look at making the church the happiest. <laughs> it yeah, says my happy place. <laughs> so as we continue, may you remember that God is a God of peace, 
and love, and that God's love never fails. And that is why I can easily say every week, every day, that no matter what, you can rely on the fact that God loves you and I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Peace be with you. Let us follow Jesus, whose love never fails.